Hello guys, welcome to Custom Gamer and this is going to be a video about how to get Quake set up in modern operating systems using a modern Quake engine so you can run all the latest maps and mods without any problems as uh, a lot of mods and maps released these days for Quake generally do not work very well with the standard programs that come with it, come with the game and uh, also because there's kind of a lot of information scattered all over the internet on various sites about you know how to get Quake working on modern PCs at an optimal level so I just wanted to condense it all down into one place that people can come to and uh, you know get the game working straight away without too much fuss so that's what this video is going to be about if you wanted to play Quake and you didn't know how carry on watching here we go okay so you're obviously going to need a copy of the game in order to play it so at the time of making this video, the best prices I could find were on steampowered.com so you can head over there and sign up for an account if you don't have one already and then you can buy and download the game using the Steam client the price for the original Quake is $9.99 £5.99 and €9.99 and the mission packs are $4.99, £2.99 and €4.99 now, a great tip here is that once you've downloaded Quake from Steam, you can move your Quake folder out of the Steam directory and just run Quake without having to load up Steam. So that's a great tip there if you can't be bothered to load Steam just to play Quake. Now the two mission packs available are Mission Pack 1, Scourge of Armagon, and Mission Pack 2, Dissolution of Eternity. Um, these are both worth playing, I think, in my opinion. Bear in mind that I'm a Quake fanatic, so probably not for everyone, but I think Mission Pack 1 is better than Mission Pack 2 in my opinion although Mission Pack 2 is still worth playing like I've mentioned already it's probably also worth mentioning that some maps and mods for Quake do require these Mission Packs to be installed in order to play them so uh, you may want to purchase them for that reason if, if the mod you're interested in playing does require one of these Mission Packs okay so we've downloaded and installed Quake now we want to download a new Quake engine so that we can run the latest maps and mods with no problems. Let's have a look at that right now. Okay, so custom Quake engines, of which there are many, many, many varieties, but for the scope of this video I'm just going to focus on two, and just to keep it simple and easy for you guys. So Quake Spasm is the one I'm going to recommend first. It is an updated version of Fitzquake which um, basically these Quake engines just update the engine to modern standards um, increase all the kind of limits in the map so mappers can add more detail, more enemies more variety, more kind of special effects, all this kind of thing just let, lets mappers be more creative with, uh, with the Quake engine so you can head on over to the download link in the description and download Quake Spasm you want to extract the files into your base Quake folder so the quakespasm.exe should be in exactly the same place as the quake.exe not in a subfolder or anything like that alright so quakespasm also has a Linux and Mac OS X SDL port so if you're on those operating systems don't panic this will still work for you just fine it also has a 32 and 64 bit version for Windows uh, don't think there's any real benefit in having a 64 bit version but it's there if you want it no problem and the other engine I'm going to recommend is DirectQ and uh, the reason I'm recommending this engine as well is because Quakespasm uses OpenGL and some graphics cards can have issues with OpenGL for instance ATI and Intel cards sometimes have some you know driver issues with um, OpenGL Rage was a great example of this <laughs> so uh, yeah grab DirectQ if you're having graphical corruption issues Obviously I don't think this will work in Linux or Mac because it uses DirectX rather than OpenGL. Alright, so we've got a Quake engine. What do we need next? We just need to set up some settings and I'll take you through that right now. Okay, so when you first load Quake's Buzzum you'll get to the main menu like this and you just want to set up some video settings and miscellaneous options before you get started. Uh, the main things on this menu are you want to set always run to on and you want to turn mouse look to on so that you can actually look around the mouse and run all the time movement's kind of important in this game <laughs> there's also a lot of other options there if you go to the video options you just want to set up your resolution run in a window you've got vertical sync and all that stuff here so just set that up how you like it and then in the console here you just want to set up your field of view by typing fov 
you see mine is set up 100 so mine mine feels good about 100 if you've got a bigger monitor then you might want to set it slightly higher 110 120 okay that just about does it for video settings there's just one thing left anti-aliasing which actually there is no option for so i'll show you how to set it outside the program okay so you want to load up your graphics card control panel i've got an nvidia card so this is the nvidia control panel and you want to add a new program and select quake spasm from the quake folder then you want to set the anti-aliasing to whatever you like eight times make sure it's override any application setting and you can also set any tropic filtering here as well i've got mine set to 16 times as it does improve the look of the textures in the game and that's it you're set up so now we just need to find some maps all right well the only thing left to do now is to find some maps to play and this is the only site you'll ever need for that it's called quadicted and you'll find it at quadicted.com and uh, as you can see here the main menu just below the graphic you click maps and then it has a list of practically every single Quake map ever released and you can sort by rating, you can sort by you know comments, uh, user ratings, you can even search for specific types of maps like runic or base maps or coop maps etc etc you can search for authors and now if we go to a map page here and uh, it tells you the files that you'll be downloading in the bottom there so this is just a BSP and uh, that's a lovely picture of a dog's ass and uh, here's where you put BSPs inside your if you make a folder called maps in your id1 directory and put them in there and if it's a mod you create a subfolder in your quake directory and put all the files in there so as you can see this is APSP1 and uh, if that sounds too complicated you can download this program called quake injector which you need java 4 anything above java 6 and this program will work just fine and uh, this interfaces directly with Quadicted, so you can download maps and it will install them all correctly, all in the right place. It will download any dependencies that the, the map or mod needs to run and install them in the correct place. And you can just set up your directories here, so do make sure you cl you select Quake Spasm for the executable. And then uh, you can just hit play. If Quake Injector sounds like more your thing, then the download link for it is on the Quadicted main site. You can't miss it. Alright, so the last thing I wanted to cover was just how to load maps from within the engine. So you see here the engine loads, you just type map, space, I'm going to load DAS SP1 because I'm an asshole. Here we go, DAS SP1. And uh, if you forget the name of the, the map name that you want to load, you can just type maps, hit enter, and it will load the list of all the maps that you have in your maps directory. And then you can just enter the map name from there. Now if you want to load a mod, then uh, you can you can type game space and then the name of the folder in your Quake directory. So, for instance, if we carry on the example we had earlier, uh, if I wanted to load APSP1, I can type game space APSP1 and it will load the APSP1 mod. And then I can type map APSP1 and it will load the map with all the new modification bits in there working correctly. Okay, well that just about does it. I hope this video has been helpful to some people that wanted to get back into Quake or perhaps just wanted to check out a map or two but didn't didn't quite know how to set it up these days. Uh, let me know in the comments if you had any problems or want to ask any more questions. I'd be quite happy to answer them. Uh, my name has been Daz and I will sign off.